Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it's about 20 to 4, 11, 22, 15, and that says welcome to Sunday. So consensus is it's somewhere around 49 degrees up here. It is 9.1 Celsius, 41% humidity. According to that, my batteries really aren't charged. They're still in the charge mode. The old energizer behind the trophy. What am I up to today? Um, just quickly, I finished putting the shed up. Um, which, by the way, huge pain. Huge pain in the butt. Um, I had a lot of trouble because the thing was set up at somebody else's house. I don't know what kind of level they had it on. I don't know what kind of level I have it on. It's not the same level they had it on. So um, the whole thing shifts in the sunlight, um, which is a setback. The other thing is it was, because everything shifted, it was hard to put things together. I ended up having to get a flat piece of metal and pry and twist and torque and uh, so forth to, to get this thing to, to go together. I also went along the bottom seam with a crowbar and pushed up and snapped everything in. So um, it's up, it's complete. The, uh, the doors aren't on it because I don't know if there's little rubber plugs in these holes down here or what the story is, but it didn't seem to come with those. I just have uh, holes on the bottom of the doors. So, they're kind of crappy anyway. I'm thinking of actually um, putting the old hinges on them. But none of this is the purpose. Oh, and the shed really isn't that big. If I put the Kawasaki Lakota in there, these two things will fit in side by side. But um, given this short little distance between the bottom of the quad and the door, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to turn them to get them out, so to speak. Um, I'll try that. I'm, I still have to build the shelves in here. I just put this in so I can see how high it is so I know where I want to put the bottom shelf. And I also want to set it up that, um, that this thing as I'm pulling it in, if I go too far, I'll hit the shelves or something because this will blow right through the wall. Um, and this thing is a big enough pain in the neck without bending it further. Okay, so that was that. I've been asked frequently, um, it's probably the most um, common question I'm asked for, from a could you help me point of view. Um, a lot of people get these things and they have no fire. They don't have ignition. No, no sparky sparky. And instantly what that is, uh, a lot of people are afraid, you know. They see stuff like this and, you know, they get all scared. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Easiest thing to do, forget about the wiring harness. Forget about the CDI. Forget about the coil. Forget about it. Forget about it, okay? You're done? You forgot it? Good. Then I'd go see my friends on eBay and buy this. Wiring, loom, harness, kill switch, ignition coil, CDI for 50cc to 150 pit. That's the person I bought this from. And that's the price. It came with free shipping. And I think this came from China. So typically it takes a couple of weeks to get here. But look at the price. $18.68. That's all. And what do you get for $18.68? Look at the picture. Get a CDI. Get a wire harness. Get the push button for turning it on and off. And you get the spark coil. You got everything. Everything. Absolutely everything. How do you hook it up? See the red and black wire? Right? I put a red alligator clip on it to extend it. And I hooked it to the red and black wire here. Okay? That's it. See this blue and white wire? I 
extended it with the alligator and I got it going to the blue and white wire right here green right see the green I extended it with the green wire put it right on the green and I should have put another green wire on it just to hook to body ground right that hard that hard that's it that's the only things you got to do right this thing plugs in where it's supposed to plug in this guy plugs in where it's supposed to plug in right that plugs in where it's supposed to plug in hook up the spark plug wire all right so you got nineteen dollars invested nineteen bucks you're gonna start buying parts when you can buy it all for nineteen bucks see this kind of crap you forget about it right forgotten this is the push button to shut it down that comes with it all right so um, obviously you disconnect this I mean look at this right why am I gonna fool with that set the choke bang string pull Guys, could you get any easier than that? For 19 bucks, you forget about the entire Honda ignition system. Obviously, you do need a good stator, right? The thing beneath here, the thing that this wire eventually goes to, see it right there. And you do need a good pulser here. I went through how to test those. This is what, 30 ohms? And I don't recall the number for the stator. I think it's under 200 or around 200, something like that. Uh, you guys can look at my past videos to see what the stator is. All right, one last time just to show you. All right, wire, loom, harness, kill switch, ignition coil, CDI, 50 to 160 pit. That's the person per mile, 77 is where I got it from. Um, and by the way, there's a, there's a bunch of these. They also have some with the um, fancier CDI box. You know, the CDI box that looks like... Um, looks like this. Uh, for the application of stator power, you don't use the gold one. The gold one is for 12 volts. Typically, orange and gold, you got to be thinking 12 volts. You should be looking at the blue one. I believe it's blue for, uh, for um, to be powered by a stator. AC powered, I believe, is blue. I know gold, because I've been using that for DC, um, uses the DC, um, uses um, 12 volts DC. So they even have some kits with that. They have some of these for like six bucks, but then it's like $12 to ship it. This came with the shipping. Normally when I buy these things, and I did not in this case because I must have been feeling cheap or stupid or something, but I, um, I only bought one, and I'm not sure why I only bought one. I, I was just going through the hoard here. I picked up a bunch of wire harnesses. Right. I must have been thinking that I would build my own. Um, if anybody gets any of these and they're having some trouble, I can talk you through it. Uh, this bike is obviously running better. I put uh, a good carb on it, a, a new carb, one out of the hoard. I also, this is the big bore carburetor, the um, bigger um, drum, piston, cylinder, slide version. Um, so, and you guys could see she runs nice. <sighs> Given that I basically got two things done at once for this, I obviously um, wanted to show you guys this nice ignition system. Right. Um, so I got that done. I also put the new carburetor on it, so I got that done. And for the time being, I got the... Um, the 300 into into the shed there um 
just to let you guys know, if you have one of these bikes floating around, it's really not exceptionally secure. I mean, what would it take to walk up to it and slam one of these on here? Even if you had the ignition off or locked or tricked out or whatever you did to it, what would it really take? You unplug that one wire, hook that up, unplug those two, hook those two up, and then hook one to ground, smash the spark plug on, and you got a running bike. So if you actually want to keep this so nobody steals it, you might want to put a chain through the wheels or a chain through the frame and, uh, and hook it hook it to something solid because it's not hard to steal um i'm not going to have time to do it today and i'm going to have to dig around a little bit for a running 250 engine but i'm gonna tomorrow i'll show you that this setup will work on a um a 250 because several of you guys have asked about the big reds there's there's two guys who's asked about the big reds one guy has a a um trx 200 it doesn't have the sx after it's just a 200 um that basically has the same engine as where are my bikes hiding? Hmm. Those are all 200s. That's a 200. 200. 200. I must have moved it up here. The one with the busted frame. There she is. Um. What I'll do is I'll fire this puppy up um, tomorrow. That's no, not wearing a carb. Shoot. What I do with your carb? Um, yeah, I, I'll have to dig up a carb. I'll try to get to it tomorrow. I was wishing that was it had a carb on it. Did I smash it onto something else? You're a 200. You're a 250, but you're seized. 200. What do I do with that carb? I normally don't take them off unless I'm um, troubleshooting something else. Um, I didn't use it on the Cushman because I, I did didn't have a carb off to smash onto the Cushman. Those are all 200s. And the 90. Hope you guys don't mind the tour. That's a 110. That's a 200. I wonder what the hell I did with that carb. That's a 200. Man. These were all 200s. I call 185s 200s because it's basically the same engine. And these are all 200s, snow blowers, or even, uh, I think these are 160s. <laughs> Shoot, I wonder why I pulled that carb off and what I did with it. Well, no use crying over missing carb, I'll just have to find another one. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and folks, please get out there and enjoy all your days. None of us know how many we're going to get, so make sure you have fun for the ones you're given, right? You don't, you don't want to leave any behind. You don't want to leave any on the table. Hmm. Actually... I think I have a 250SX here. Yeah, 
There's a 250SX. I guess I can play with that one. That hasn't been started in a while. Yeah, there's a couple of 250SXs here. That guy, and you really can't see it because it's too dark, is a 125 quad. This one is a Mojave that I smashed a 200S motor on. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Once again, remember to keep your feet down, your head up, and please enjoy all your days. Bye now.